I think Swan Lake has changed a lot over the years because I've had the quite rare opportunity of being able to re-look at it every couple of years almost for the last 15 years. So I felt I've had the chance to, each time it's happened, to reassess what I think about it. I've got a little older, obviously, in the time since we first made it, and it's sort of, like my approach to it now is a little more, I don't know, it's a bit more serious in some ways. I think I've ironed out some of the more broad humour in it. I kind of want it to really feel something, I want it to really mean something, and that's, uh, I've, I've got more passionate about that as the years have gone by. In 1998, we got the chance finally to take the show to Broadway, which was um, obviously the highlight of, you know, my career up to that point. There was a lot of uh, trepidation, a lot of fear attached to it. Would it work? Would the audience take to it? The great thrill was, of course, that they did, and they, the audiences were some of the best we've ever had. And we, were, we ended up uh, getting nominated in all the awards um, and not being nominated for, I think it was five Tony Awards, three of which we won. Again, a completely surreal experience for me, having watched it on TV as a kid, um, to be in the front row of that audience. I remember every second of it now. I used to watch Swan Lake a lot before I was even a choreographer or a professional dancer. And I think I used to uh, daydream when I was watching it. Um, and an idea came to me through watching it, not thinking that I would ever have the chance to do it, of what if, it was the what if the swans were male. The idea really for me that most people probably don't realize is that it was more of a psychological thing that that did to the story that really excited me because it made the swans, rather than being a magical princess who turns into a swan at night and that sort of thing, um, it became more about an image of a swan being something that this prince, who lived a very restricted life, it became an image for something that he could attain to, something he wanted to be. And that was the trigger for the story for me, was uh, the, having the sex of the swans the same sex as the prince. <laughs> So the character of the prince is the central character, really. Um, it's his story. It, he takes you right through the piece. He's there from the very beginning to the very end. And it's a story of someone who is very restricted by the life they have to lead, which is that of a royal person. And I think in, in this day and age, um, there's very few areas of life where you can't be who you want to be if you want it enough. But being royal, I think, is one of those areas where you can't be the person you are, you really are. You have to play a role. And um, I thought that was a very strong central character. And for him, um, I'm trying to show someone who needs love in their life in some way. And not necessarily sexual love, it could be just the need to be held almost. You know, he's got a very cold mother. Um, he has a, a sort of fake girlfriend in some ways. He finds the whole routine of royal life extremely dull and repetitive. And what I've, I try to tell in the piece is that throughout Act One, at least, until we get to the Swan Act, is, is to tell you as much about this character as possible. So by the time we get to that act, he's a very needy character in many ways. He's someone that you really have invested in. Uh, leading the cast for this production that's coming to New York, we have several performers who've perform with me for their whole careers, actually. Dominic North, who plays the Prince, um, started dancing with me when he was 19, and Swan Lake was the first production he was in. He's danced in it throughout several seasons. In Swan Lake, I play the role of the Prince. He's a bit of a complex character. He's uh, quite, an, I'd say, un unhappy at being the Prince and the royal duties, and he doesn't know how to conform to them. He's tried to do it for quite a while through his childhood and it, it something doesn't quite sit right with him. Um, and he's a bit of a disappointment to his mother because of this. And that kind of makes him a slightly tormented character, I guess. A bit, he's, sometimes he's frustrated, sometimes he's just unhappy. He just doesn't know what to do. He's in this situation he can't really control. 
but he still has to keep a, a front and be the prince who people think he's supposed to be or he tries to be. And Nina Goldman, who's playing the Queen, has been playing it this season. She's played a lot of roles within Swan Lake. She was actually in the original Broadway cast, and we auditioned her out in New York, along with some of the other dancers at that time. She's stuck with the company on and off over the years, has performed in other work, but has played several of the princesses. She's played the girlfriend, and now she's graduated to the role of the Queen. <laughs> It's an interesting character because I think oftentimes she's portrayed as the villain. I don't quite see her as the villain. I see her as a woman who's struggling with her public and private life. She has been raised in an environment where she needs to behave a certain way and it's sort of been a very sort of sheltered upbringing. Everything's been taken care of for her. So as an adult and as a role of the queen, she knows how to behave in public. She knows how she needs to present herself. But when it comes to her personal relationships, specifically with her son, the prince, she is incapable of showing affection, feeling vulnerability, and relating to him on a personal level. Each time I do the queen, I, I find sort of different layers with her because I, I, I don't think she's just such a simple, cold woman. I think she's struggling with her own sense of feeling needed and wanted and being loved and being able to um, show affection and show love and give love. Richard Windsor, who plays uh, the Swan, is, again, a bit like Dominic, started his career with, with my company, age 19. That must be about nine years ago now. Has played every leading role in the company. Um, has created uh, roles in Play With That Words, uh, Edward Scissorhands, Dorian Gray. So he's in, in many ways probably our leading male dancer. I play the Swan, the lead Swan, uh, and also the Stranger, who comes in in Act Three, who uh, who has, you know comes in as the uh, dark, menacing character in leather pants and a big black coat and whip. Um, but the, the Swan itself, he kind of uh, throughout Act Two, he represents the kind of the uh, freedom and peace and beauty of of the kind of one side of the prince's personality. Is the way. Kind of, I like to see it, and the Act Three, the stranger, the dark side of the prince, the kind of dark, debauched side that he can't, you know, he wants to express as well, but he he can't find um, reason to express it. So the the two characters that I play kind of represent the two sides of the prince's personality. The thing is with with the Swan Lake, but also the role of the Swan and the stranger, um, they're such iconic roles. Um, they've been played you know, quite a few times in the past. So you've almost got that expectation. People know you're just about to come on stage. People know they're just about to see the swan appear and enter. You just kind of, you want to live up to that. I mean, what I love about being the swan is uh, the animalistic nature of it and, and really kind of getting inside being what this powerful masculine swan is about. And then similarly, the stranger, he's got this sex appeal. He brings sex and uh, kind of lust into the room. And he's just kind of through, from the start to finish, you got people like looking at you and playing off you and kind of loving you in the space. I mean, I've, I remember seeing it in the past and watching a stranger throughout, and you can't take your eyes off them. You know, it's just you're so drawn to their kind of uh, presence. So to be able to be in that position and play that, it's, it's kind of a privilege, really, and it's just you kind of look forward to it all the time to do. So it's a fantastic, fantastic experience. Jonathan Olivier, who's our other lead swan, um, is a dancer that I've had an eye on for quite a while. He was working with Northern Ballet uh, in a lot of narrative work, which obviously interests me because of what I do, and then has danced in different places around the world since for a little bit. But he's, he, he, this is his, the first time he's worked for me, and I found him incredibly charismatic and perfect for the work, and he's fitted into the company beautifully. His character is, is very wary. I mean, we try, you know, what we've been told um, and the way we try and portray it is that it's, it's very animalistic and, you know, swans are very territorial, so um, anyone that kind of gets close to them or gets on their patch, you know, they they're quite become quite aggressive. So I try to make it that it's not pretty, like, you know, in the classical version, we're able to be like men or, 
you know, become big like a cat, like uh, like an animal. So we're actually quite aggressive to the prince when we first meet him. Um, you know, he's he's kind of stepped into our world, and um, and as a swan, um, you know, I try and get that point across through the movements because we can't use our faces, you know, to to smile or be aggressive. It all comes through the through the movement, through the body, um, and then as as the the second act kind of progresses, we kind of allow him into the world where we end up start dancing together. And um, so basically, it's just kind of getting that um, fine line between, you know, being aggressive, not letting him into your world, then kind of like accepting him to being at the end where you are kind of as one. The upcoming dates in New York are a, are a big deal for us. It's not just another day. 10, 15 years we've been performing this piece on and off throughout the world. And to come back to New York 10 years on after Broadway is the, probably the biggest thing that's happened to the show since we were, were on Broadway. So it's sort of a, it feels very significant to me. Partly for, because I feel that the piece has undergone a lot of changes in that time. I think it's a stronger piece. I think it's choreographically tighter. I think it's uh, more heartfelt. It's also, for me, very significant because it feels much more like my company performing it, New Adventures. Many of them are real Matthew Bourne dancers, if there is such a thing. So I'm, I'm almost more proud of it now uh, to be going with a group of people that um, I've nurtured and, and, and have grown within other work in my rep and this piece in particular. Um, we're incredibly excited about going. It's going to be the highlight of their season, definitely. I've always felt that New York was a great audience for the sort of work that we do. And um, I'd love to see, think that it might be the beginning of several uh, return trips. <laughs>